Hello everyone, this is Narina from 40k Theories and welcome to this new episode of 40k Lore for Newcomers. For this episode, nominated on Patreon by Nuclear Meltdown 7, we will be taking a brief look at Space Marine Dreadnoughts and other similar walkers. This video will be a brief overview for certain events that may be explored in greater depth within additional videos within the future. So, without further ado, let's begin. Here we stand, and here we shall die, unbroken and unbowed. Though the very hand of death itself come for us, we will spit our defiance to the end. The machines known as Dreadnoughts are large, bipedal war machines utilized exclusively by the forces of the Adeptus Astartes and the Adeptus Custodes. These machines, which are for all intents and purposes walking tanks, can boast a mixture of devastating firepower and highly potent melee capabilities. This destructive capability, combined with their reinforced armor, makes Dreadnoughts incredibly dangerous opponents upon the battlefield. Many of these war machines are extremely ancient and are revered by their chapters as being holy relics in their own right. For some variants, the arts of their construction have become lost, making many of these venerable machines utterly impossible to replace. Unlike other Imperial Walker constructs, such as the Imperial Guard Sentinel, Dreadnoughts are not operated by a traditional pilot who is able to freely enter and exit their machine. Instead, these machines are operated by great heroes of the chapter that have been mortally wounded in battle. Once entombed within a Dreadnought sarcophagus, the machine will not only act as the warrior's life support system, but becomes a physical extension of its own body. Should the frame of a Dreadnought be destroyed, then their occupant may be given the chance to fight within the confines of another, should their life support sarcophagus remain intact. Those interred within a Dreadnought will grow to become venerated and respected members of the chapter due to their centuries of wisdom and experience, and when not in combat, the battle brothers of these great heroes will allow them to slumber undisturbed. Although the longer Dreadnought's occupant continues to live, the further they spiral into senility and madness. To the majority of Space Marine chapters, there are few honors greater than being granted the chance to continue to fight in the Emperor's name as one of these powerful machines. You may say, it is impossible for a man to become like the machine. And I would reply, that only the smallest mind strives to comprehend its limits. There are three main patterns of Space Marine Dreadnought, many of which have numerous variants and are derived from their original designs. These particular patterns of Dreadnought are known as the Contemptor, the Castroferum, and the Redemptor. Of these three different patterns of Dreadnought, the Castroferum is the most commonly seen today, specifically those of the Mark IV and Mark V design. While there are minor differences between the Mark IV and V, they are functionally identical. These particular models sport a squat, boxy design which is noticeably shorter than other types of Dreadnought, though they still tower over many men and Astartes alike. One of the reasons as to why the Castroferum became so commonplace was due to the fact that they are powered by a highly adaptable thermic reactor, the operation of which being better understood than the highly complex atomantic arc reactors found within the Contemptor pattern. Numerous variations of the Castroferum exist, such as the Hellfire Dreadnought, which is designed for long-range firepower, armed with twin-linked LAS cannons and a missile launcher, making it an ideal tank hunter. Another common variant is the Ironclad Dreadnought, which is designed for close combat and siege breaking, sporting additional reinforced armor plating and a variety of melee weapons that can tear their way through the toughest defenses. In addition, some chapters have their own unique variants, such as the Furioso and Librarian Dreadnoughts of the Blood Angels and their successor chapters that are designed for close-range assault. 
The mode is dreadnoughts of the Dark Angels and their successors that provide long-range heavy weapon support, and the wolf and dreadnoughts of the Space Wolves that are little more rampaging berserkers due to their feral, bestial occupants. The Contemptor pattern is the oldest type of dreadnought still in service to the Imperium, with the first known dreadnought pilot in Imperial history being interred into one of them. Compared to the later Castroferum pattern, the Contemptor is taller and more elegant in appearance, but still incredibly durable, thanks in part to the incorporation of a field generator that protects the dreadnought from heavy weapons fire. This type of field generator would later be incorporated within the storm shields that are sometimes wielded by Space Marine Terminators. They are also faster and more powerful than the Castroferrin pattern machines, due in part to being capable of feeding more power to their systems via their atomantic reactors. Numerous minor and extensively modified variations of these machines exist, some of which are specific to certain factions. Some of the more widespread of these minor variants would include the highly unstable yet easily maintainable Cortis class and the Mortis class, which is essentially the Contemptor equivalent of the later Castroferum Mortis. Legion specific variants included the Incendius class dreadnought of the Blood Angels, which is designed for rapid assault and is even capable of jumping and the Osirian-class dreadnought of the Thousand Suns that are designed to house powerful psychers and allow them to wield their psychic abilities both safely and with skill. The warriors of the Adeptus Custodes make extensive use of the Contemptor pattern as opposed to the modern commonly seen Castroferum and have a number of unique variants of their own. These include the Galatus class, which is armed with a Galatus Warblade and Presidium Shield, and the Achilles class, which is equipped with a Dreadsphere and Corvé Las Pulsar. More extreme variations also exist that sport such vast differences with the base Contemptor that some have argued that they are unique models of Dreadnought in their own right. The first of these are the Leviathan-class Siege Dreadnoughts, which are nigh-unstoppable brutes that lay waste to all in their path and are capable of withstanding all but the heaviest weaponry, although such is their power that they slowly drive their occupants into madness. The second is that of the Deridio class, which was designed to serve as mobile heavy weaponry and support platforms that sport enough firepower to lay waste to countless foes. These particular dreadnoughts over the millennia have become rare and irreplaceable relics, and any chapter with access to these great and powerful machines will typically only send them into battle during the most desperate of times. The Custodes also make use of an extensively modified variant of the Contemptor, known as the Telemon Heavy Dreadnought during the course of the Horus Heresy, although it is unknown as to whether any examples of such have survived into the present day. On the other hand, the Redemptor is the most recent pattern of Dreadnought to be developed by the Imperium. These dreadnoughts are some of the largest of their kind to exist, designed to house mortally wounded Primaris marines. Like other patterns, these dreadnoughts can be outfitted with a variety of different weaponry and have immense destructive capability. Unlike the Castroferum and Contemptor patterns, however, the Redemptor has no variations on its design as of yet, but unlike with other dreadnoughts, those confined to a Redemptor will not survive for too long, certainly not as long as those interred within other patterns. This is due to the fact that the rate of power consumption is so high within the Redemptor that over time they will essentially burn out their occupants, leaving their bodies as little more than charred lifeless husks. Despite this, those who are fated to become one with the Redemptor become venerated and revered for their selfless sacrifice in service to the Imperium. This machine is discharged into your care. Fight with this machine, and guard it from the shame of defeat. Serve this machine, as you would have it fight for you. While Dreadnoughts are perhaps the most well-known of all Astartes walkers, there do exist a number of other war machines throughout the Adeptus Astartes that are piloted in a more traditional manner. 
The first of these engines is known as the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. This machine shares a similar design to that of the Redempted Dreadnought, but instead of being operated by a mortally wounded Astartes interred within a life support sarcophagus, a healthy Astartes pilots this machine using a series of interface nodes connected directly into his power armor. Despite their size and bulk, the Invicta is designed to support Vanguard Space Marines during scouting and reconnaissance missions. To aid in this particular role, the Invicta is fitted with numerous sound dampening devices and their servos and reactors are altered to produce as little noise as possible, making these machines surprisingly adept at stealth. They are configured primarily for short-ranged firefights and can tear through infantry with little resistance, though they lack the capability to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with tanks, true dreadnoughts or their Xenos equivalents. The other non-dreadnought walker of any note within the ranks of the Adeptus Astartes is used exclusively by the Grey Knight's chapter, the Nemesis Dreadknight. These colossal war machines were designed with the intention of allowing members of the chapter to challenge the might and power of greater demons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. While the Invicta warsuit is operated through a series of inputs to buttons and joysticks, the Dread Knight is sympathetically linked to its pilot, allowing the user to control the Dread Knight as if it were his own body. Such a process is extremely taxing on the pilot, and thus only the most disciplined and highly skilled warriors of the Grey Knights receive the honor of operating a Dread Knight in battle. Not only do Dread Knights often sport both potent long-range and melee capabilities, but the machines can even be fitted with personal teleportation devices, allowing them to strike directly at the heart of the enemy. And that concludes this episode of 40k Law for Newcomers. If you liked this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those who are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So. Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.